Good evening folks. Tonight I'm going to talk about uh, Windows 10. Well, at least Windows 10 technical preview, which I decided to download after watching a video by... I can't remember who, but I was watching a video on YouTube where this guy was or had installed Windows 10 preview on a Dell Optiplex uh, GX280. So I thought, as I've got all these spare machines kicking about, why don't I download it and install it onto here? And I don't know why, but that's the light. It's just looking cloudy on my screen. But uh, if I'm moving the light, that stops. So it's just light on my screen. Um, anyway, so I've installed Windows 10 Preview on this. So, uh, should we give it a look? We'll turn it on. I've, this is the 64-bit version I've put on this. I've also downloaded the 32-bit version. So I can have a play around with that and uh, just see what specs I can go down to using it. Because the uh, specs on the Microsoft site all it says is a one, I think it's a one gigahertz processor, or it might be a 1.6, I can't remember, I know it's pretty small, and one gigabyte of RAM for the 32-bit, and two gigabytes of RAM for the 64-bit. But it didn't say if it was a dual-core processor, or DDR2 RAM, or what, so I'm going to experiment. Anyway, here we go. Just like Windows 8, when you first boot up, it comes up with this screen with your time and date on it. And that's actually spot on, according to my clock on the wall, anyway. Left click on the mouse, brings you up your login. You do need a Microsoft account, so if you haven't got one, you will need to make one. You log on using your Microsoft account. So, so that part is pretty much like Windows 8 was. But uh, as you can see, unlike Windows 8, it opens straight up to the desktop. Which is, to me, a bonus. I prefer that. That's why I've never bothered personally upgrading to Windows 8. Um, Windows 8 just wasn't for me. I'm not going to say it was a bad OS, it just wasn't for me. Um, got the usual things. I've dragged and dropped these folders on here when I was playing with it yesterday. I've installed Firefox. That's gone on absolutely fine. I've installed VLC Media Player. That's gone on fine and works. Same with Yahoo Messenger. So I haven't had a problem installing any of my usual programs so far. Uh, you've got the, the taskbar down here with pinned icons. You can pin and unpin all of these if you just right click on them. And that should give you... There we go, unpin this program from the taskbar. So it gives you the option there. You've got a search window at the bottom here in the taskbar which allows you to search without bringing up a web browser straight away. So, if I type in Facebook, for example, it helps if I actually click in the window. No, it's not letting me do it now. No, for some reason that's not working. It was working yesterday and it's not working now. <laughs> so we try again. Oh, it still doesn't want to work. Hmm. Keyboard's on. The numlock key was on. Oh, we're pausing it, was it? No? Hmm. Oh, well. This is what's under the um, start menu, which is now this little Windows sort of symbol, the Windows 10 symbol, down in this corner. Uh, to me, this is a lot better than the Windows 8 
they out. It's not perfect, it's not exactly as it used to be, but this is something I can get used to and I can live with. have got a bunch of apps here on the right. Common apps, Skype, People, Mail, Calendar, Store, Xbox, Family, I don't know what the LS News, uh, Maps, OneNote, Photos and Weather. Then you've got some Explore Windows apps, Get Started, Insider. I don't know if that will be on the official release. Mm -hmm. It might be, it might not. Uh, then you've got Everyday apps like Music and Video. And recently added. And if you go right down into this corner where it says All Apps, you can bring up a list of apps in alphabetical order that are um, installed on the computer. You've got an alarm feature at the top here, which is the only one under A at the moment. And C, you've got calculator, calendar, camera, contact support. Again, some of it, this isn't obviously the uh, final product, so some of these may not be here. You've got documents under D, food and drink under F. Games and get started under G. Games is actually quite interesting. I've managed to download a trial version of a game. Reckless Racing, it's called. And I don't need a micro don't need an Xbox account. Just click on it, and it brings up this games window, and you can. It appears that you can purchase games as long as you've got a Microsoft account. Again. I don't know if the Microsoft account will double up as an Xbox account. Um, I've never had an Xbox. I don't know how that works. I've never been in the console games, not really. The newest console I've got is a PS2, and it's barely used. But, uh, yeah. You can get some pretty cheap games on here, so if you're not big into games, you could use this to get some cheap games, I think. The Reckless Racing one, if I want to buy it, that's three ninety nine. So four pounds if you round it off, that's not bad. Search games up the top corner here, top right corner. So that's definitely probably one of my favourite features, even though I'm not really a gamer, but I do like playing the odd little game now and again. So that's about it for the start menu. Uh Down the bottom here, you've got a lot of the other usual apps and things. You've got Windows accessories, which you'd have found on the old of operating systems. Windows Ease of Access, again, has been around for, since I can remember. Windows System. I'm not sure about that. What's under that? Oh, I see. You've got a lot of things that have been kicking around for a while as well. Command Prompt. Ooh. Ah, so I haven't got to remember the keyboard shortcut. Wow, that makes life a lot easier. Especially if you know what you are um, doing with a computer. That makes life a heck of a lot easier. You see, I'm still finding things out myself as I do this. What else is under? Default programs, devices, file explorer. File explorer. Help and support. Run. So you can run as well. Uh, task Manager. This PC. Windows Defender. Windows PowerShell. So it gives you all the system tools, basically, under Windows System. Well, I suppose that's a bit obvious, really, isn't it? Duh. <laughs> um, what was I was going to click on? Oh, this PC. Does it give you the PC details, then? And yes, the hard drive is noisy on this machine. It's an SATA hard drive, but it's really noisy for some reason. I did have some really noisy fans on this uh, side cover as well, but I took them off. And it only had a small fan for the rear chassis fan. So I whacked on a 5-inch fan at the back there. Don't know what that is in millimetre. Click this PC down here. What does that do? Anything? No? No, it's because it's already open. You're numpty. Well, it's a local disc and DVD drive. 
I'm not sure if it's recognising the card reader, but there's nothing up on here. We haven't got a memory card at hand to try that. Sometimes it'll come up if you put a card in the card reader. So, I don't know. Let's go see if we can find one and just try that, shall we? I've only got a look on the shelf in here. In fact, I've got a look in this little disc tidy up here. I should have one in the top here that I can use. I've actually got a few. <laughs> They're only small. Like, uh, I think the smallest is 256 megabyte. I might even have 128 megabyte in here. So these are like the uh, early ones. Yeah, there's a 256 there. 128 there. And that one is actually so worn I can't read it. Let's try this one. If I find the right slot. The lights come on, on the... There we go. It comes up when you put a card in. Is there anything on it? Shouldn't be, because I've formatted them all. Oh, there's a picture. Is it still opening the picture, or what is it doing? I hope that's nothing naughty. That's why I turned the camera away, just in... Oh, it's my ugly mug, there you go. <laughs> yeah, now you know what the guy behind the camera looks like. Anyway, I'll delete that off there. Yep, we can go. Does it actually say how big the disc is? No. We'll go back then and... ...488 megabyte. Wow. Okay, so that's... ...my only gigabyte's worth of... ...space. <laughs> Well, at least we know the card works. The card reader works. So, that's a bonus. No idea why I keep these memory cards, because they're really too small to do anything with nowadays. Any hoozle. Let's move on. Uh, what happens if I right-click? Uh, right-click on the, the desktop. Click Personalize. That is just like Windows 7 and Windows 8. That's good. Yeah, there isn't really that much difference, I don't think, between this and Windows 7. Uh, I've just kept a few things from Windows 8, like all this app shit. I've never been one for apps, you know. They've always been called programs in the time I've used a program, um, a computer. Yeah, they're the same thing, I know. Mm. All in all, I haven't had any problems with this machine as yet. Um, I could have put this and up on my uh, main computer and upgraded that, but I'm going to wait until the official release before I upgrade it onto my main PC. But uh, as far as a new operating system go, I think I will be upgrading. There's a few things I'm not keen on on this, but I could live with it. I could get used to it quite easily. And there's a, this is actually running on a 1.6 dual-core Intel processor with 4 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. This is actually pretty fast on this. So, yeah, if you've got that sort of specs on your PC, you should be able to upgrade pretty easily. Um, if you want to download the preview for yourself, all you've got to do is go on the Microsoft website. Just Google Microsoft Insider, and it'll, you'll um, see the links. And you just download. And if you haven't got a Microsoft account, you can set one up. Uh, 
It does give you a product key, but I found I haven't had to use it. Because according to the system on this, it's activated. And it's the same product key for everyone, as far as I can tell. Because the person, the um, video I was watching that inspired me to go and do this myself, uh, the product key he used is exactly the same as the one I got. And that gives you that on the download page. So I'm not sure what the actual point of that is. Um, of course, there's all the various languages that comes in as well. So, yeah, if you really want to see what Windows 10 is a lot is going to be like. Obviously, there's a few features that don't work, like Cortana doesn't work. So I can't see what Cortana is like. And there's a a few features I can't remember off the top of my head that don't work, but nothing really that would make any difference unless you really want to use them, of course. Um, to me, it would make no difference. I could easily set this PC up and use it straight, use it right now if I wanted to. But uh, as I said, with my Windows 7 PC in the lounge, my main PC, I'm going to wait until the uh, main or the official version of this is released. I don't think it's going to be much different, to be honest. This is actually quieter than my main PC. Then again, my other PC has got two fans in the top as well. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I'm happy with it. Of course, you're better off, if you can, trying it for yourself. Because my opinion is just my opinion. Yours may differ. You may, have, you yourselves may dislike it. And probably think I'm chatting complete shit about it. But, you know, we've all got our own opinions. Some people are going to like it. Some people are going to hate it. Not everyone is going to like it. You know, maybe if you've um, installed the preview of this yourself and. I want to give your thoughts on it in the comments, and feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments. I do apologise for my cat, he's a bit vocal tonight. Um, I think that's about it. I mean, look, the desktop icons look the same, the recycle bin icon hasn't changed. Not since Windows 7, Windows Vista at least. The older icons look different to Windows 7. I can only really compare this to Windows 7 because I've never really used Windows 8. My mother had a Windows 8 laptop, but uh, that was a while ago and I can't remember exactly what it had on it. Because that was a horrible piece of crap. I think it was a Samsung. I think it was a Samsung. If I remember rightly, I hate it. It's horrible. Well, I don't know if it was a hardware issue or if it was just the software, or perhaps a mix of both, but I didn't like it at all. So <laughs> I always took my own laptop over to use. Uh, da -da -da -da. I've actually got a laptop I could put this on and use it. No, I might actually do that. Upgrade it. No, I've got the disk. And I've got the computer. Actually, I might try 32 bit on that which I need to get some more DVD discs for, because I've ran out. I only had two DVD discs left, and like an empty, when I went to burn the first one, an empty nuts here didn't burn it as a bootable disc. So I had to burn it again, so I've wasted one of my DVD discs. So I've only got CDRs left, and there's no way that's going to fit this, um, that. I'll try that again. There's no way this operating system is going to fit on a CDR. Uh, I'll have to see if I can get some DVDs tomorrow, or at some point in the future. There's no rush, I'll get them whenever I can. This hard drive is doing something well, so it is connected to the web. I haven't had to install any audio or video drivers either. Uh, I tried YouTube on Firefox, that worked absolutely fine, I didn't have to download Adobe. if we can open Firefox. It's got Internet Explorer 11 on it, if I remember rightly. 
I've never been fond of Internet Explorer 11, or any Internet Explorer really. Install add-ons, no I don't want to, not yet. Let me type in YouTube, try and find a video that doesn't have music, because I prefer not to get this flagged up. Actually, the internet is working pretty fast on this. I've just got this blue ethernet cable going from here round into the lounge and to the router which is just the other side of that window. This is a very British 60s styled flat with these windows separating the kitchen and the lounge. Uh, yeah, I know this one's got a lot of talking in it. See? Those are absolutely fine. So, aside from the app applications that don't work, Windows Update doesn't work on this. But as far as, actually as far as I've found, Windows Update and Cortana are the only ones that don't work so far that I've found. But apart from that, pretty much everything else on this system does work. And uh, as I've said, I've not had any trouble installing anything. It's not thrown a wobbly at me or anything. So I think for, um, for Fox, I think Microsoft has uh, done a good job this time round. Uh, like I said, I'm still not keen on having these apps here. I still rather it was these old style start menu, but. I think it's a compromise I can live with. They've sort of they've managed to mix both onto this system. I think to keep both lots of people happy because I know there's lots of people, like a lot of members of my family, that liked the app screen that came up on Windows 8. Whereas I know also know lots of people that preferred this method where it came straight into the desktop. So uh, I think this is actually a good compromise to keep both sides happy. It's certainly a, something I could get used to. I'm already starting to get used to it actually the more I use it. That's why I've left it set up in the kitchen. So I did uh, do this machine yesterday but uh, also I tried to do a video like this but it didn't come out very well so I just deleted it and started, it and started again. This is the uh, third attempt, I think. So as I say, the third time lucky. This is this will be the one I will use. This is the one I'm happy with, so this is the one I will use. Uh, I don't know about the standard desktop background pick, though. I'd rather something a bit warmer on there. Should we see if we can find something a bit warmer? Why this hard drive is always working, I don't know. But that really is getting on my wick now. Let's try the flowers theme. Oof. Got pink headers at the top of the windows now. Hmm. No, I don't think I'm going to like the high contrast themes. Oof. No, that's like teletext. <laughs> There we go. So that's the one that comes when you install it. This is Windows Technical Preview. And you've got the flowers one. Ah, good. You can put the slideshow back. Ah, that doesn't look like that's available on this. Oh, it might be, actually. Just having a hissy fit at me for some reason. <laughs> I haven't got a clue what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like me going into that, so I'm going to close it. Well, uh, that might be a glitch on the hard drive. I don't know what was going on there. 
The hard drive has stopped. Should we try again? No, still doing it. It doesn't like me. Well, there we go. We found something else that doesn't work on the preview. Never mind. It's still got the same features as before, so... I'm not sure I like that picture any better. Well, that's alright then. The other, the other advantage about downloading the preview is you can um, test to see if it's going to work on your system or not before you uh, invest in the um, final release. Um, I have been hearing that if you run Windows 7 Home I think it's the Max, so I was told from a reliable source, or Windows 8 or 8.1, bloody cat, you can um, upgrade for free within the first year. So if that's true, and like I said, I've heard this from a reliable source, I will be using that, or taking advantage of that, which is actually handy for someone like me who hasn't got a budget that would squeeze in buying a new operating system. I'd probably have to save for it, but I wouldn't be able to upgrade to it as soon as I'd like. Um, but like I said, I have heard that from a reliable source. But uh, whether Microsoft actually goes through with that or not, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to end the video here. As always, if you like the video, please hit the like button. I appreciate that a lot. And uh, any comments and questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.